Let's stand and turn to the book of Esther, chapter 4. We're going to read uh, verses, uh, let's read 13 through uh, 17. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself. Listen to this. Think not in your own self. I don't know about you, but I do a lot of that. That thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, there's a lot of problems going on. That's not a time to hold your peace. That's a time to praise God. When you've got problems, that's time to lift up your voice and praise. Seek the face of God. See, how, how many, let's just be, don't answer this, but just how many of us, you get sick, you're going through something, you kind of just bow up. That's your flesh winning against your soul. Oh, if we got Saul, Paul and Silas praising in prison, what's our problem? Then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. He's speaking directly here. Listen, God's doing something. He's always doing something. You better be part of the doing and not the dying. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere today. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Never does anybody rise to prominence without a problem. Your, your problem is not the problem. How you deal with the problem is the problem. Are you hearing me? Amen. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. Well, there's that word fasting. We hardly fast for ourselves, never mind somebody else. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. Oh, wow, she just removed liquids too. You know, you ain't gonna run by McDonald's and get that shake. Oh, I'm fasting. You got that shake in your hand. Took that meal, you blended it up with some water, you drinking it down. Vitamin C and supplements and Starbucks and Monster and whatever y'all drinking. I'm fasting. You ain't fasting, man. Come on. Let's come on. Can we be honest? The attributes of Christianity are, are, are pretty much dissipated. I call for a week of prayer. Y'all look at me like I'm turning green and got carrots coming out of my ears. Call for fasting. Y'all, man, man, he ain't talking to me. I got medication to take. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. You got that with God yet? Some of you are dying on the wrong hill. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded. You know what he did? They went and fasted food and water yes. for three days. Let's take a moment. Let's place our Bibles down and let's, let's lift up our voices, lift up our hands, and let's talk to the Lord right now. Jesus, we need you. Your presence is powerful in here. We're thankful for that. But Lord, as your word goes forth today, I pray that there's a moving and a coming together. That there's a, a move that, that changes and transforms minds and hearts today to get to that place that there's absolutely nothing more important than living for God. That being committed to the cause and whether we perish, we perish, but we're going to live with a purpose. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I want to 
use something here. I haven't given it to them in the, for the Bible app this morning, but I got to thinking while I was meditating yesterday on this and the story of in Ezekiel where the hand of the Lord carried Ezekiel and set him in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. And caused him to pass by them round about. And his description was they were very many in an open valley and they were very dry. And it is said that it was said to him, can these bones live? Now I'm going to make this personal so y'all need to be listening. And I answered, he said, and the Lord God, thou knowest. And again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. So literally, the prophecy is interchangeable with preach in that context. So we know the Lord spoke the world's existence. We know Jesus said, breathe and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. We know that the word of God and the breath of God brings life. Amen. Amen. And so as I stand here over this valley, over these bones, over you, is there someone here today that like when he preached, you can get your life back together? That your world can start coming back. Cause some, of us, some of us going through some stuff. Some of us are dealing with some things. Are, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Are, 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 are you with me this morning? The psalmist in Psalms 118, there's a beautiful portion of scripture. He says, the Lord is my strength and song. I, I, I caution you, be very careful. And, and I say this because, and I don't know, I'm going to assume that Sister Crow and Erica kind of get an idea of my spirit by what I listen to. And I've been in a battle for about two weeks with my health. And my battle isn't the same as your, your battle. Unless you're immunosuppressed, you don't understand. And it's a battle for me. It's, it's like I'm in a boxing ring with Mike Tyson and I'm not allowed to use my hands. I'm getting hit. I'm getting pummeled. And I got to hope I survive. It's out of my hands. My, 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 my health is in the hands of God. And I'm okay with that. But I understand that it is a moment for me to consider. It is a moment for me to be honest. It is a moment for me to be pure. It is a moment for me to realize, okay, God, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to lift you up. And then I'll be honest with you. Uh, um, I, I preached all night and I preached in my dreams and I, I laid there when I couldn't sleep and insomnia would attack or, or, or just, a, and all night long, it was just, I'm going to try. In fact, I told, I think it was Brother Bruce, I told him, it don't matter. I'm, I, I am doing everything I've done the last two weeks so that I could be here today. And so when I got up this morning, I broke out some old school stuff. Some of the stuff y'all couldn't handle. In fact, I looked at my wife and said, you probably couldn't handle this stuff. This is not for the weak. And because I, I knew that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a fight. Yeah, amen. Anybody, anybody understand what I'm talking about? Sister Burdell, I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I know some of you know when you're in a fight, you're in a battle spiritually. I see, 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 the problem with some of you, you the reason you're not in a fight is because you're too comfortable. Yeah. You're too comfortable. You don't want anything. You don't need anything, and you've convinced yourself that all this stuff you got is going to replace your need for God. And I'm thankful for the thorn in my flesh that keeps me very alert and aware. I need him if I'm going to make it. And so the psalmist utters this, the Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. I sent out a text the other day, seek to be righteous. Don't seek to pray eloquently. Because if you're righteous, you don't have to pray eloquently. He, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous. Oh, I want to be righteous. Oh, God, help me be right before you. 
Let me get my heart right, my mind right. Let me get my priorities right. It don't care how much money I got in the bank if I'm not right with God. It don't care how much health you got if you're not right with God. None of that matters. The, the right hand of the Lord does valiantly, it says. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. It says it twice. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I, I tell you, I'm here to declare the works of the Lord. I, I want to tell you, hey, church folks, it's time for us to embrace and possess our response ability. Your ability to respond properly. Responsibility is your ability to respond. Responsibility is your ability to respond to what's going on. Some people run when it gets hard. Some people lose their temper when it gets difficult. Some people get mad and backslide and sit there, bowed up and mad at God because things don't look like you. I want to respond to the word of God. When he told him to prophesy and to speak to those dry bones, you know what they did? They took responsibility. They responded and had ability. Oh, some of you are sitting here and you could be dry. You can be dead twice plucked up by the roots. But the word of God can bring life back. The word of God, the speaking word of God can come in and start getting your life organized again. It can bring things that are broken and mend them. It can bring things that have been wounded and restored. The word of God, when it goes forth, it does things that nothing else can do. I know there's people, they live, I just want to be happy. No, if I'm saved, I can be happy. But I can't be happy if I'm not right with God. It's a sad day when you can be happy and not be right with God. It's a bad day when you can be in sin and wrong. It's a horrible day. If you're looking just to be argumentative and in conflict. And these bones live. Well, I'm going to preach and see what happens, Lord. God seems, listen to this, this is, this is, Sister Peaches, this is a sticky statement, but it's true. God seems to have a disdain for self-preservationists. You sit back and go, I got mine. I ain't worried about nothing. That's like, then you're not like me. If you're not caring about your brother or your sister. There's something wrong with you. Wait, what, do you what do you mean? You got yours. You're not going to care about nobody else or... You know, well, how, 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 oh, wait, where's your cross? Well, I ain't got time for no cross right now. I'm trying to make it. He does not like self-preservationists over doing what's right and what's needed. Hell is filled with great regret and the incessant repetition of the words, if only. If only I'd have done this. If only I'd have done that. Hell is going to be filled with if onlys. In Mark chapter 8, it says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the qualifying, and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Do you know Jesus said that? We can't take that out. Mm, that destroys self preservation. There ought to be something, in, and, and you have to understand we, we, how many, oh God, take this from me. I don't want to do this anymore. That don't work. Now, praying, it's okay, but you got to get involved in that. You got a problem with that, then don't go there no more. Don't bring it in the house no more. Don't buy it no more. You have to understand, my flesh, my sin, is, and my, my faith went to war. My soul is the battlefield. You're, the battlefield, we don't fight with one another. Sadly, we do. Our greatest fight is with my flesh. I get these ideas. I get the, we get these concepts that, 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 that are not according to the word of God. You see, you just can't take one or two scriptures. You better get the whole gospel, and you better find the harmony between Old Testament and New Testament. You can't pluck this out there and pluck that out there. You've you got to get it all together. 
Are you hearing me? On anointing. Anointing. Not annoying. There's a lot of annoying people. But anointed. <laughs> I got someone laughing. <laughs> is revealed by your ability to respond to situations and circumstances regardless of personal risk. Vision without action is daydream. Action without vision is nightmare. But vision with action can change the world. Amen. Can change your life. Amen. You can sit here and if you allow the word of God to come forward and permeate and you take the word of God and the spirit of God with the activity to do the will of God, you can change everything about your situation. You can be actively involved in what happens. Paul and Silas could have stayed in those stocks and bonds and be critical and complain, but instead they worshiped and got out. You can't believe God with a shut mouth. You can't believe God with Hands in your pockets. You see, God turns and says, I saw how you reacted when you got mad the other day about something didn't go your way. And I looked how demonstrative you got, and I looked how sure you got, and how confident you were, and the belligerentness you had with people you should have reverenced through. And now you're going to turn around and be mad and treat me like that? All right, go on with your bad self without me. Are you hearing me? You have to understand, hell wants you obstinate with heaven. Hell wants you bowing to it instead of standing for God. Now, see, there ain't no problem you standing for yourself. We all have that by nature, and that's one of our biggest problems. But you have to understand, Mordecai, he's in the gate. And Haman's upset because Haman wants him to bow. Church, you got to realize you cannot hide. You have to make a chance. You have to make a choice. You, have to, you, you just can't casually come and go from church and think you fulfilled an obligation here. There's got to be something about you that it transforms your Monday and your Tuesday and your Wednesday and your Thursday. And over years, there's an improvement and a changing and a growth. You need to become, look, if you're, if you're, How's Nehemiah? How old is Nehemiah? Seven months. Is he in diapers? I understand that. Now when he's seven? Oh man, are we judging him? Well, maybe he just needs a little more time. Well, I'm glad I'm not his dad. You better learn how to use that pot, pal. <laughs> Because that's a mess I don't want to deal with. Well, let's spiritualize that. There's some people, you need, you, if you're still battling the same stuff at seven, you're in the church seven years, and you're battling the stuff you hear as a two year Man, let me get them diaper wipes for you and a little desitin and a pacifier. Hold on, it's time you grow up. You better get in the word and mature. Well, well, I'm not saying this in a mean way. I'm saying you got some victories to have. There's some battles you're supposed to be winning, but you're still acting like a baby. You're still back there in, in, in diapers when, when you should be up here dominating. The church is not a hiding place from the world. We're insulated, but not isolated. We're to make a difference. We're supposed to stand out. We're supposed to stand up. We're supposed to be salt and light. The call of God is not a seat in a building, but an opportunity to shine in a dark world. The defining moment of your life is when you finally decide to quit me a number and just taking a seat and deciding to stand up and make a difference. He was very clear. He said, if you want to remain silent at this time, if, 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 if you're going to be quiet now, you may just get passed over and God's going to find somebody else. Oh, you, you know, I ain't never seen disdain like I've seen from people who I've had to step in and do what they were told to do. Oh, my God, I remember when I got hired on at Intel years ago. 
I had to call in. I had I got I asked if I wanted to work overtime and go in and fix some stuff. And I went in there and fixed it. Worked overtime over the. I worked on Saturday and Monday morning. Come in there and the guy that had 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 haphazardly done it. Come in. Who messed with my work? You hating on me? Why are you hating on me? I did what I was asked to do. I came in after the fact. You left the mess. Now, I didn't do that. Don't get mad at me because they asked me to come in and make it better. I don't mean I'm better than you. just mean I just did things different than you. I, at some point in my life, I realized, wait a minute, I, I better start perfecting what God's called me to do. Wait a minute. When, when Esther makes the statement, if I perish, I perish, she may say, I'm all in on my purpose. You have to understand, you will vacate your purpose if you decide that you're no longer willing to die for it. How many glad Jesus died for it? You may not realize that it's your trial that will give you the privilege and audience with the king. Without this trial, Esther never went before the king. Without this situation, she doesn't prepare herself and get herself ready and put on that right proof. See, some of you don't care what you smell like when you come in here. You don't care about your attitude or how you spoke to someone or what you did. You just come walking in. God, you just got to come. You, 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 you excuse the mercy of God for the approval of God. Come on, how many of us got that ridiculous kid come walking up in that house, been acting like a fool, and because he's sitting at the dinner table, you better not spout off, because I got a whole lot I want to say that it's just a mercy I can shut my mouth right now. I've been explaining to you and explaining to you for so long, and you're still acting a fool. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You've gone and done something ridiculous that I've warned and warned, and you nothing get, you know, I'm not quiet because I'm approving of you. I'm quiet because you're getting my mercy. Because if I unleashed how I really felt about you right now, some of us get to that point. And we've been living for God for a little while. We think we're grandfathered in to approval. Oh, no, too much is given, much is expected. You better show some reverence. You better show some, you better come in here and have a sweet smelling Savior and a humble spirit before God. He's worthy of my praise. Because he brought me this far. He brought us a mighty long way. I'm thankful. Oh, right. I, I know right well, right now, except for the grace of God, there go no I. I'm telling you right now, I, I ain't always made the right decisions. I ain't always done what's best. I needed some mercy. I needed that place where God was like. Never forget one of the greatest men of God in our Movement, son, got up and spoke at his funeral and said that of his dad at a funeral, he was born in poverty and he died in poverty. He had no money, nothing in retirement. He sacrificed it all. He did. And it's his legacy. And I know about him. And if I said his name, you'd know about him. And he built God's kingdom and he built a great church and he gave what was in his heart until his last breath. He left a legacy. You leave a legacy by what you give, not what you get. Everyone wants a legacy. Uh huh. But you don't get that without actually walking with God. You don't understand. Righteous legacies are made by sacrifice and built right one step at a time consistently living for God with moments of if I perish, I perish. But the moment you back out and bail out and say, not this time, it's over. You got to be doing the right thing right now. You can't leave a legacy in the kingdom of God without laying down and being humble. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes, to everything there is a season of time, to every purpose under heaven. It's a time to be born and a time to die. Well, listen to me. Let, let, let the Spirit of God move here. A time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep. 
a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to stow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in whereth he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it, and he hath made everything beautiful in his time. I don't know what it is time-wise in your life. but it's always a defining time. It's always so that what you do today will define what, what you say today, how you act, how you speak, how you treat, how you love, how you give, how you take. All those things encompass who we are. When we face tragedy in life, when we face trouble, when we face death or sickness, disease, loss, business failure, job failure, financial struggles, family issues, we could go through the whole entire encyclopedia of things. There's so much pain and trouble associated with life in and what it is, but there's still time for all those things that the writer of Ecclesiastes said. Most of our lives, things can happen in a moment that are beyond our control. They're out of our hands and they can seem to erase years of growth. I, I worked so hard for so long and you produced and you worked hard and something had happened to where you think all the evidence of growth has been destroyed. But God isn't looking for us to be successful. <laughs> Success is living for God no matter what season and time it is, no matter what circumstance or situation it is. See, 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 some, see, the problem with most of us, many of us, probably all of us, is we have an expectation, especially here in the United States. We, we think success is comfort. Every time I read about comfort in the Bible, someone's lost. Every time I read about someone having everything they want and everything they need, to have need enough, they're lost. They're not in a good place with God. By the fact, one writer said, until I was afflicted, I went astray. I find people that are very comfortable are not very spiritual. In fact, I find those people have a demand of a, of a, of a certain level of position that's, that's no longer earned, but expected without producing. That doesn't go well with God. And man, we kind of have to be uh, uh, men pleasers. But in the church, you know, let's be honest here. Wait, wait a minute. We don't need no Johnny come lately. You better have, uh, you better have some corn in your crib. We all face circumstances. See, wait a minute. Before you want to take out your pain pan and show us all, we didn't come here without one. You see, 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 I may have an older pain pan than these kids, but it's no less painful than. Brother, Brother Paul Price said an amazing thing one time that set the whole church right. Puppy loves real to the pup. So that's why it's good. Hey, you know what? Don't you get attached to nobody until you're even close because you may not handle that pain. Right? Hey, young lady, you may go out there and give yourself to some fool who ain't never going to have a job, ain't going to amount to nothing because he has no goals. If you got goals, you better find someone who's got goals. They better be on to achieving those goals or you're going to be stuck in hate life and wonder what is going on. God, you, you made that choice. You, you took that moment and you defined your life by that choice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we all face circumstances of life so catastrophic, destructive, that it literally forces. You ever had something force its painful will on you? Something that happens to you that's out of your control. You've done everything you can for, to avoid something like that, and it still happens. Leaving you lifeless, breathless, and sometimes maybe even hopeless. And in a moment, all is well, and then next thing you turn around, it's like a fire went through and destroyed everything. This despair and destruction. Every one of us are attacked at many levels in life, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, personally. But nothing, nothing is harder to navigate. Nothing is, is tougher to go through than when you're already in a struggle. 
with normal issues. And you already got hurts and pains and maybe some wounds and, and, and an enemy full of hate attacks you when you're already down. You know, we've heard it before. Ain't nothing like when they kick you when you're already down. One person in the Bible, it's like he, he, he it was David and he's writing and, he, and, he, and he, just the way he writes it, it's like he said, I understand this and I understand that, but I didn't expect to be fighting you. I, I, I have and I will always continue to preach messages of hope. And you know, I, I went from drug dealer to hope dealer. Hello. Hello. I want you to have hope, have hope no matter what I'm preaching about. I know that sometimes I preach hard. It's more, more harder because of the look on my face. I can't help this. But really, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you because I know God's rooting for you. He's for you. I, I can take you to Scripture. God's for you. In fact, he tells you, and it's like multiple choice. I've set before you life and death. Choose life. See, he gave you the answer. Now, some of you may not be remedial like me, but I needed even that answer. I need to know, wait a minute, man. I can't get all sideways with my own thought. Let me just choose. Let me just live for God. Sometimes, sometimes the deep theological things are messing you up and you can't even live basically for God. Sometimes you just need to quit trying to understand everything and just start living for God and letting go. You know, a couple of scriptures, great. But just get to the point where you fly all in. I'm going to live for God and I'll understand it better by and by. I believe God wants us to triumph over life issues. I realize that bad things happen to good people, but it doesn't always end there. Life can be painful by itself, but, but, but sometimes, let's just be honest. Let's go ahead and talk about our enemy, the devil. Sometimes there's a deliberate attack from an enemy that hates you. Life could already be full of problems. You could already have issues going on. Nobody's in here without an issue today. And I don't have, I have the privilege of knowing, but I will never share some of the things some of you absolutely wonderful people have shared, and we're praying partners over it, and my wife and I are, are privy to some things, and if you knew the pain in this room right now, it'd blow your mind. And you add that, and then the devil turns around and attacks you. Job, Job, Job was attacked on purpose. The devil's good at that. Be careful when you think you want to turn around because you got your little feelings hurt. And you want to turn around and you don't know what that person's going through. You don't, you don't know that they're fighting life and the devil and finances and struggle and family matters and all this is coming down. And you want to come in here and sit there like a lump on a log. You want to stand and worship just because it might help somebody else. You have to understand, we do have an adversary that looks for someone to devour, looking for someone to attack, looking for someone to mess with. Esther's story is a vivid picture of people, individuals, churches, families to learn from. As we grab and let's, let's, let's just intrude in the middle of her life because There was an apprehension. Look, she'd lost her mom and dad. She'd had pain. She's basically adopted and taken care of. So she, she knows pain, but we don't lay that into the story. We're just, oh, man, look what she did. Well, no, let's look what she did. Because when we judge her actions and her, that thought of seeking safety and shelter, in the king's palace and presence, know that her life had not been kind to her. She knew pain, tragedy, devastation. Having lost her parents, being an orphan, raised by an uncle, life happens because nobody, there's no such thing as a, the perfect family anymore. So whether it's job loss, 
marital struggles, financial struggles, divorce, medical condition, loss of a spouse, sickness, you name your trouble, you name your tragedy. Giant sized problems can destroy even the most secure and productive of lives. We talk about life. The word life can mean life. It's a serial. It's a game. It's a word that's everywhere. We, we talk about it. In the spring, look, everything's coming to life. Well, it wasn't dead. It just didn't look. Oh. When you say life, it also means your life over time. It means your lifetime, your your your. Your created history. Can I say that? See, we, we, we measure by time. But understand, God is not bound by our watches. He's not stuck in our calendars. And his time is infinitely immeasurable. See, 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 get yourself off thinking you're going to get God in a box that you understand everything. Because he, he, he transcends time itself. We don't even have a clue what that really means and we won't until we get on the other side of a lot of this we're not fully going to understand that because he transcends time itself his time is intangible we can't really grasp God's time and we struggle with this because we're trapped by time this last two weeks made me consider my time for us, time is objectively measured, and for days, we look at our watches. For weeks, we turn to our schedules. For years, we consult our calendars, and we measure time from this moment. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You measure it from right now. We, we, we see life like a series of still frames, one after another, but God is free from those confines, and he can see the end from the beginning. We, we don't know those things. God is free from time. He can see everything at once. This is why we can seem to remain stuck because he's silent in the pain sometimes. He seems to be silent in the drama of your life. That moment where you, you lost your temper, or that moment when you threw your hands up, or that moment, and even the most stalwart saints I've heard make statements that We struggle with God and his timing. and We can say he's late. How can he be late when he sees all of it? He missed a deadline. How, how, how? Really? He speaks life. He gives life. He, there's no deadline. Mary's summation. And Jesus walked on the scene. You're too late. By now he stinks. And some of us are feeling the same way. My situation stinks. You're too late, God. You let it go too far. I, I, I'm, 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 I, I, I'm at my end. I, I'm out of money. I, I, someone else got the position. and so, Somebody else got the job you want. It's too late. They ran off and got married. And uh, God, I just know you had them for me. And uh, I missed that opportunity, God. And, and we constantly judge God's actions from a limited viewpoint. We become critical of the will of God. We become critical of God because he missed. He's not given me what I demand. We become critical, unbelieving, difficult, awkward with God. But you know, from our limited view, if if we'll live by faith, we know that he knows how our story turns out. He knows what he's doing. See, 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 some of you, I spoke to someone before church, and, ah, we don't know. Okay, what are we going to do? I, I don't know, but God isn't wringing his hands. <laughs> he's not going, what am I going to do with him now? <laughs> he, he, he's not even up there going, I wonder what they're going to have for supper. 
He's not doing it. He, he, he's not weary. He's, he's not tired. He, 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 he's not confused. He, he's not caught off guard. Hospitals don't scare him. Sicknesses don't bother him. He transcends everything. Time and problems. He knows that ultimately justice always wins out and good will triumph over evil. He's already ordered all of that. He will have his way. Can you praise him for that? He may not do it your way, but I promise you God will have his way. If you'll be a worshiper, you'll be all right with that. If you're a believer, you'll be okay with that. You'll be like Job, though he slay me, yet I'll trust him. When you're a believer and the money ain't there, you'll be all right. When you're a believer and the health is not there, you're okay. You'll be a believer and nothing seems to be going your way. You still stand and see the salvation of God because you understand. I'll praise him because he'll have his way. No matter how you try to rationalize your circumstances or manipulate your situation to turn out how you want it to be. We do that. Because we think God's being unfair. Come on. Turn around and look at some. Oh my God, look at their world. Look at their life. Look what they got. Look, look, look. Oh, you don't know the ending of that situation. I'm pretty sure there might have been someone looking at the rich man in the Bible and he had everything. I wonder if Lazarus sitting at the gate would look and go, wow. But did anybody, did, did, did he get to see the moment when he was pleading with God? For, oh, I don't know about you. Yeah. I want to be mindful of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is my defining moment on how I think about God and how I treat God and how I respond to God. And if preaching, if, if preaching comes out over my bones, I want it to bring life, not cause me to run from it. See, so you have to understand, only at the end of your lifetime will you understand what role that that circumstance played in your life. You, you don't understand life moving forward. We understand it looking backward. I, man, I think I mentioned this the other day. I, I, someone, some singer wrote a song, I thank God for unanswered prayer. <laughs> you know, come on, some, some of you married folk was praying for that other one. You jump on Facebook and go look and find, oh, I dodged a bullet there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, boy, you go find that high school suite. You're like, thank, thank you, Jesus, for not answering that one. Woo! God. Hello? Some of you, some of you, some of you being careful. That's all right. We are unaware a lot of what God is doing in the process of our lifetime. We are ignorant to many of the details that are in play. And God's hands are mostly invisible in our time-trapped eyes. It's a walk of faith. Oh. It's a walk of faith. I'm not living for God because I see everything. I'm living for God because he does. Oh, I hope I helped someone with that. He, God knows the end from the beginning. So you know what? I'd rather just go ahead. Let God have your way. Oh, I, wait a minute. I'm not saying that's easy to get to. But once you get there, it gets easy. Oh. Some of you are so busy fighting God and trying to make sense. If you would just get back and live for God and say, God, I'm going to submit my will. I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm gonna let, me, let me bring this up. God still demands holiness and separation, the cross. Now, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I preach and teach and I talk about it, but I don't get into details. I'm going to tell you something. We need to get back to the idea that there are things that please God and things that displease God. And if you're so busy doing the things of the world and looking like the world and dressing like the world and acting like the world, it's doubtful that you're pleasing the God that's saying, I'm fixing to destroy this mess. 
Ladies, you need to be looking like ladies. That's Bible. Godly ladies covered. Men, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. Quit being angry. Hello? Quit being a tyrant. You demand all this kind of honor for you and you walk in the church and sit there like a lump on a log and don't give honor to God? Really? What? Okay. Let's, let's talk. Do I need to go down that road? Because I said so. So did he. In fact, he wrote it down. And all the men said amen. I'm not, I'm not, look, I'm not trying to hurt someone here. I'm trying to realize your defining moment is when you'll turn loose and say, okay, God. Can you imagine the smooth sailing that can happen? Oh, you may go through some storms, but God's still at the helm. Mm. Faith believe. listen, listen, listen. If you can get this, I, I think every one of us can be miles ahead. Faith believes in advance what will only make sense in reverse. The book of Esther is an incredible tribute to the invincibility of our invisible God. It brings hope into our lives. How what looks bad and sounds bad and feels bad won't necessarily end bad because that unseen hand is involved in my life. And he has a desired plan and outcome for each and every one of us. He says in his word, I want you to be the head and not the tail. I want you to be an overcomer. I want you to be above and not beneath. God's already said, I'm for you. He's got plan. Can you, if, uh, do you realize that a lot of the struggle we go through is because we're simply doing it our way? It's easier to read the story of, of Esther because we're free from the stress and strains that are contained in living the story. I want to be real here. I, I, some, some of you guys aspiring to ministry, I, I, maybe I'm too, too brutally honest about it. In fact, I'll, be, I'll tell you, quit, quit saying I'm desiring this and I want to be a minister and I'm to teach it. Do you realize the requirements? Do you realize the life? You're gonna, God is going to be knocking the fire out of you to keep you humble, to keep you to love and, and make sure that there's so much. Be, be careful. I, I, if you're not called to this, run from this. Because even those that are supposed to be of your own household will turn on you. You have to, we live in a world today that hates the truth because they're too busy loving their lie. We live in a world today that has so much Christianity but no truth. Well, we, got, we got a bloodless cross, crossless Christians, people that take one or two scriptures. They're so messed up. There's so much confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Humanity is. But we love the story of Esther with the expectation because we know how it ends of waiting on God to show up and how at the end he turns the whole drama and it unfolds and it's inspiring. We, 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 we get to enjoy how it worked out. Those gallows that were being built didn't scare us because we know how the story ends, the, the, the way it comes full circle. But that's not the story we live. It seems our lives, when a fierce enemy is hard on our heels, the Red Sea wasn't parted. We aren't warned by angelic visitors when disaster was imminent and tragedy stood at our door, knocked without reverence. There was no burning bush there to give us divine direction and assurance from the Almighty. The tragedy hits without warning, and expectation just seems to be shattered on the floor. Well, it was the same for Esther in this story. It was the same for Mordecai. The, the building of those gallows looked scary because they didn't see the end of the story. They couldn't jump to the end of it and find out how it ended. Death seemed certain every time they, they heard the hammer fall or the saw go. The, the enemy's victory seemed so secure with what they were dealing with because they, they were living in the nasty now and now. Every hammer blow and saw cut, loudly blaring out that it was coming for them. But could they still hear the still small voice of God saying, have faith? 
I've got plans for you. I've got a purpose for you. Can can you live for God and put God first and walk away from self-preservation and worldly success to walk close with your Savior? How can I have faith when I'm literally watching my death sentence being carried out? Watching that monstrosity monster being erected right in front of me in direct opposition of my faith in God. Speaking loudly of the hopelessness and despair that would assail me. It's easy to see God in the middle of the miraculous. It's not so easy to see him in the painful, terrifying doom that lays before some of us in what may be on our Monday. But that's where we live. There's no handwriting on my wall telling me I'm going to make it through this. There's no, there's, there's no thunder from Mount Sinai knowing that God's still writing some great commandments for me. Manna hasn't showed up in the morning to feed me. And there's not one fish I ever caught had a coin in its mouth to help me out. And we're daily busy working every day trying to make ends meet. Family issues and sickness and bills and doctors and lawyers and storms and trouble. And our lives don't read like the epicenter of spirituality. Yeah, you didn't wake up today with angelic choirs of confidence in your bedroom. The Holy Ghost power that you feel on a Sunday night service with Brother Lulu is spitting and sweating and everybody's jumping and shouting and the music's going. That You didn't feel that when you got up last Monday morning. It wasn't there. You got up facing the troubles and the, tri- and the gallows of your life of sickness and pain and struggle and death and problems and finances and children and the weight's heavy. Our life seems filled with these everyday issues with only hopes of a great move of God. Maybe maybe Sunday morning, Brother Crow's going to preach something to lift me above and beyond this. Uh, but there are no red carpets. There's no free meals. I, I'm here to tell you, I know there's going to be no silver spoon today. There's no real flowery pathways of ease. They, they, they don't exist. It's safe to say that most of us are going to face some stuff. There's going to be pain. There, there, there's going to be some kind of disaster. There's going to be something looming over you. And I I was to look up the word life in heaven's thesaurus. I'm not going to give you the answer you want, but I'm going to give you the one that's true. It would, one of the first descriptions would simply be pain. Life is filled with sharp corners and hard floors and brutal realities and constant struggle. And we all try to cushion ourselves from the bumps and the bruises in life. And we try to brace ourselves for the falls. And we work hard and we save and we scrimp and we buy life insurance and car insurance and homeowners insurance. We buy all sorts because we don't want any pain. But pain is inescapable. You just knew when you got married, he was going to be the man of your dreams. And you didn't know how many nightmare nights you were going to have. Or you just knew she was going to be the angel of your morning. And you woke up and realized, the devil comes down to Georgia. It's impossible to hide ourselves away from trouble and avoid pain. And even the most spiritual people face the daunting task of simply surviving. I haven't moved, ruined my message today. I, I, this is really not negative. This, if you will listen to me, you have to understand, yes, Job was covered in skin ulcers, and yes, he did lose everything. Daniel was thrown to the lion's den, and Joseph was imprisoned. David was pursued by a bipolar, schizophrenic king. Paul was stoned and beaten, drug out of the city, and left for dead. Lazarus spent three days in a tomb. Job declares that he is the epitome and the epicenter of pain. Man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. In fact, the living Bible distills it in three succinct phrases. How frail is man, how few is days, and how full of trouble. Well, Sister Carol, if that don't depress you, I don't know that I can get you there. Yet a few chapters before this in Job. See, that's the problem. I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to study this word, you've got to study all of it. Because a few chapters before this, (laughs) 
In Job 5 and 7, yet man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. Born for trouble. What? Can, can, can I rephrase it? Can I put it in today's vernacular? You got this. If you're in God, you got this. And let me skip some of the wind up. Let me make it plain. I, I want to spoil my own sermon. I know what time it is. I recognize it. And I feel better than I expected. I am. I'm feeling, feeling pretty good right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going I'm to spoil my own ending. Y'all better be careful. We hit one o'clock. And you know he's still going to be on fire tonight. So you don't want to miss that. I, I, can, I, can I tell you my crux of the sermon now? Problems are unavoidable. Layla, that's it. You go back tomorrow to school, or you go back, there's going to be some jerk. There's going to be something. But isn't it time? Are you ready for class? Isn't it time to quit trying to deny the existence of struggle? Stop trying to avoid the unavoidable. Isn't it time to quit hiding from the hurt? Stop trying to avoid pain and struggle. Stop walking away from wounds. Face the reality and responsibility as the church. In fact, saints of the most high God. Can, can, can we eliminate the excuses and instead endeavor to achieve it? Can, can, can we stop trying to avoid the presence of pain and quit acting like nothing happened? Can we go ahead and take a seat in the class and learn the lesson that's being taught? Stop skipping class and get what God's really trying to teach you. The Bible lets us know to honor the hoary head, the gray head, because they've been through some stuff. They, yeah, yeah, and, and they're still here. No, 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 no. Yeah, come on. Improve your spiritual walk. Stop pretending and actually live it. Cast off the works of darkness. Stop giving in the fleshly sins. Justify because life doesn't look like you want it to look. Face the fact that we're all in a fight. And it's a fight of faith. Paul said to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Stand up, scars and all. Look life in the face and say, I'm still here. This will be my moment. I will not flee. I will not falter. My faith is in God. Yes, I'm wounded. Yes, I've bled. Yes, I've wept. Yes, I've been hurt. But I'm still here. If he could be crucified and come back three days, I can get up tomorrow and try again. Oh, one of the greatest testimonies you'll ever have is when you're going through hell, you get up and try again. I may or not have done it all right, but today I'm going to try to be better. Embrace the conflict. Eliminate excuses. Show up for it. Stop skipping. How did Mordecai say it to Esther? How did he say it? Hey, girl. Who knows? Are you hearing me, sweetheart? Let me tell you something. Whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time. What's he saying? This is your defining moment, Esther. You didn't get there just because God wanted you in the palace. God had a purpose. God didn't bless you to be self-righteous. God hadn't kept you to be arrogant. God hasn't kept you to turn around and become the Dead Sea. He called you a defining moment to produce something amazing in the kingdom of God. You were called for such a time as this. And the world may be dark and life may be ugly, but this is your moment. This is your time. This is where you prove there is a God. This is your opportunity. This is your moment to matter. This is the place you take the stand. This is your moment. This is your season. 
the director of eternity, and slap the moment open. You're on the stage of life. The entire spirit world is watching. There's a great cloud of witnesses anticipating your ultimate success. All heaven is watching. Will you wield the sword of faith and fight on? Or will you flee? Mm. All Hades, all hell is breaking loose around you. A Pandora's box of pain has been opened on you. But no matter how pristine life looked before, you may be in it now. Yeah, you're, you're, you're in it. Turn to your name. In fact, why don't you turn your name right and say, you're in it. This is life. Too many times we let life pass by. Too many times we just go with the flow. Well, I guess it wasn't God's will. Too many times we don't account for much on the grand scheme of things because you just simply throw in the towel on your faith. But you gotta have, you need to understand something. What you do does matter. The choice you make will be your life. It will be who you are. It will dictate your family. It will dictate dictate what kind of church this is. I'll never forget Brother Pew preaching a message. What will your sin cost me? What will your con conduct at a Christian make this church out to be? Well, eh, eh, oh, you come here and you're, you're some special person around here. Let's check your Christianity. Don't come around here talking about importance if you're impotent. Stand up and get powerful. Prayer time isn't play time. It's prayer time. The Bible is not just a book that chronicles sweeping crusades and mass movements. It's a story of individuals. And as an individual, you've got to decide what impact you're going to make on your life. People just like you decided against all the trouble, pain, terror to stand up and be counted. To press through the problems and make a difference. To show up. The three Hebrew children, Daniel and the lion's den, Paul, Silas, I could go down the list this long. All defining moments that we all look to, we love those stories. Moses raising his stand still and shall see the salvation of the Lord. We love Esther's phrase. I'll be honest with you, I wish I'd have been the one to say it. I wish that was me. I wish it could be said of me. I made that statement. Y'all a bunch of lying dogs, you know full well you wish uh, you wish you were known for that. Winston Churchill stated against ominous impending power of the Nazi war machine during World War II. He said, let us brace ourselves to our duties and so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will say this was their finest hour. The finest hour was in their fiercest fight. Your finest hour will be in your fiercest fight. You have to understand the most terrifying time is the most important time. As Esther faced the ominous, dangerous taxes before her, her outlook changed. She wouldn't play in anymore. She wouldn't hide, play in hide and seek anymore. Some of us need to get serious with walking with God. Some of us need to get serious with this God stuff. You, you need to start casting down those little works and secret sins of darkness, those silly, foolish sins and little proclivities and attachments and addictions. It's time to lay aside all that junk that, that is more associated with the world than God. You need to lay down those attitudes and idiosyncrasies and take up the mantle and calling and stand up against sin. Moving from fear to faith and quit trying to blend in there and make sure you matter. We need to move from reluctance to resolve. Yes, Esther makes a statement that shook all the hell. You better believe it did. It woke up every dormant demon that thought it was going to be business as usual. You need to understand something. All hell's watching you. Yes, it has no problem with you being the way you've been. You know, walking in here at any old time and missing, you got a little nook and cranny, aches and pain. I don't mind. You miss when you're sick, but you're missing every other week because you got some. Man, feeling good and being sick are two different things. What Esther said sent Satan into a schizophrenic fit. 
Saint cannot handle it. Satan cannot handle a saint that finally commits to the kingdom of God. Oh, he doesn't mind you coming to church. He don't mind you having a Bible. He, he just minds you getting real. When she said, if I perish, I perish, hell knew it was done. Hell knew it was over. When she made the statement, I ain't going to run and hide. I'm not trying to find a place of self-preservation. And she chose to show up and make a difference for everyone. When she finally decided to make a difference for everyone around, when she finally decided that the people of God and the kingdom of God, that one individual choice, that young girl choosing to stand up was vital to the outcome of a nation. You don't know that your moment when you finally decide to go all in and live for God and lay aside all the weights and the sins and the little idiosyncrasies and the worldliness and the carnality and stand up and go all in instead of being someone that just gets by being someone you cannot miss now you have to understand something. we're all in here as a group it's easy to say amen and yes but the greatest time you ever stand up for faith is when you have to stand up alone when God has placed you in a position where you are standing alone. Hey, ladies. This is real beauty. This beautiful woman was more than just a pretty outer shell. She may have had a pretty face, but she wasn't just a pretty face. I'm going to tell you, your face may attract them there, but it's going to be your character that keeps them. That little that little app you got on your phone. I don't want to hurt y'all's feelings or nothing, but it may get you a date, but it won't get you a ring. She was more than just another pretty face. The radiance of her character shone brighter. The darker things became. She she her name literally was Persian for star. Star. A star's power comes from the fire inside. It would have been easy to say, I'm just one person. What can I do? How will my life matter? Why should I risk myself? I know I'm talking your language right now. Some of you sit there. And you're more concerned about your little job in the church instead of being a part of the church. You haven't won a soul or thought about winning a soul, care about winning a soul, and you're just doing your little job. If you really want to know how much difference one person can make, Scripture tells us that Jesus values one person so much he's willing to leave the 99 to go get the one. One is an invaluable number to God. Yes, it is. This whole story is illuminated by the fact of how sinister evil is based on one person that didn't bow. You don't think you not bowing matters? Hell can't. And the moment you decide you're going to take them cigarettes and throw them aside, you're going to take that little addiction and that foul language. You're going to take that. You're going to quit looking at that. You're going to quit going there. You're, going to, you're finally going to quit listening to that. You're finally going to say, you know, I'm not going to let corrupt community. I'm finally going to get my house in order. We ain't watching that. That ain't coming. I'm not going to allow my kids and family. Be, I'm, I'm not letting carnality. We want Christ in here. Hell can't handle saints like that. Haman was outraged that Mordecai I wouldn't bow. Everyone was bowing. He had everyone. But it wasn't everyone that mattered. It was the one that wouldn't. Hell is, hell is put to run by the one that won't. That's the power of one. That's the power of one. That's why, let me tell you something, trying to be like someone else is a waste of who you are. That's it. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> That's good. Amen. You're worried about what somebody else's house looks like, what else somebody else has in the car, somebody else's church. I don't give a flying rip about any of that stuff. I care that when I get up in the morning, I'm doing what God calls me to do. I, 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 I had someone the other day criticize this church, criticize the size of this church. I'm like, you don't know what it was when I got here, pal. Say what you want, and I don't care if we get no bigger than this. I've done everything that God's asked me to do. That's the power of one person. Hey, when you're ready to throw in the towel and give up and it ain't never going to happen, well, hey, one person can turn everything around. What would happen if we get two around here, three around here, four around here? Instead of those same bow, let's see what happens. That's the power when you worship when no one else will. That's the power when you don't pass the buck. 
Hey, sir, in your home, it ain't up to your wife for holiness. It's up to you. That's the power of not waiting for someone else to do it. Hey, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It starts with me. Don't call me boss around here. You're telling on yourself. You're telling on yourself. The power of living for God is not waiting for somebody else to do it. The power of a person who desires to live for God, that's the power you find. <laughs> Two great armies stuck in a stagnant, unfulfilled conflict stuck no one's moving no one's going nothing's happening. god's not winning and the enemy's not gaining any ground and god finds one lowly shepherd boy and says i'm gonna wind him up and throw him in the middle and i'm gonna get glory that's the power of one person can do living for god i'm telling you don't sit there thinking you're minuscule i'm telling you if you'll stand up if you'll get your five smooth stones and get your little slingshot and stand up i'm gonna worship and i'm gonna pray and i'm gonna shout and i'm gonna live for god and i'm i'm gonna make it there'll be no status quo in our church hey teenager let's stand i gotta wrap this up that's the power, teenager, when you stand up and refuse to get high when all your friends are doing it. That's the power of a chaste young lady that refuses to jump into the sexuality and the sleaziness of refuse to give into that way of life. They're not all doing it, trust me. There's something about that person when everybody else is bound and you refuse. You know who you become? You become the prize. That's right. That's right. In the face of struggle. Refuse to bow. Send an infuriating message, just an infuriating message to your enemy. Send a message to the fear that wants to creep in. Send a message to the devil. I'm not bowing. If I perish, I perish, but I'm not bowing. I'm not giving in and I'm not giving up. If I perish, I perish, but I'm not giving up. In fact, let me tell you something, devil. You can threaten me and you can scare me and I can have trouble and I can have pain and I can have problems, but I'm showing up. I'm showing up. You may be going through the trial of your life. It may be raging all around you. You may be physically, emotionally, spiritually, physically hurting. But don't let that ever move you off your commitment. Because when you show up, it matters. There are some of you, I look around this room, and when you show up, I'm like, hell's getting the butt kicking today. You got every reason to be laying up in the bed, but I'll tell you what, you, I'll tell you the accolades of heaven are on those who get up and make a difference. Anybody can find an excuse, I don't feel well. We whoop de deal. Play hurt. If you want to talk bad, then be bad. Play hurt. Sing sick. Preach in pain. Show up in the struggle. If I perish, I perish. But devil, you ain't getting me to quit. My defining moment will be my choice, devil, not yours. Oh, no. The great apostle Paul and how much he mattered. He makes a statement in Acts 20 and 24, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I may finish my course with joy. Oh, see, living for God is pure joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I admonish you, show up, stand up, survive, keep standing when others are bowing, keep showing up, show up for work, show up for your family, show up for your friends that are watching, show up for the church that needs you, show up for your God, show up, because it's declaring, it's saying, I will fight, I will not bow. I am committed. Lord, make me your instrument. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon.
Where there's doubt, I want to sow faith. Where there's despair, let me bring some hope. Where there's darkness, let me shine bright with the light of the gospel. Where there's sadness, let me bring joy. Where it seems hopeless, let me prove that there is hope. Where there's devastation, let me sow desire. I may be bleeding, but I'm still in this fight. I may be wounded, but I'm still going to worship. I may have slipped and even fallen, but I fight on. My problems may seem prevalent, but I will press on. It's a matter of choice. Is it greater that is he that is in you than he that is in the world? Is that what it is with you today? We were made to survive. We were made to be victorious. It's time to bestir thyself. It's time, like Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that is in you. It's time to realize, you know what? Everybody's got some pain. Everybody's got problems. Everybody's got a pain pan we could come up and display and weep and cry about it. Everybody's got an excuse to throw in the towel. But this morning, I'm looking for those that instead of throwing in the towel, you'll take it wipe your brow and say I fight on I will be defined by the fact that I will fight and not flee That's it's my time it's my choice I, let me say something to you today is the day yesterday's gone tomorrow's not promised today's a gift that's why it's called the present you decide right here and now what you're going to be you got to tell the devil, you will not define me. My choices will. And I choose to serve God.